They don't glitter like gold. They don't flow like oil. But they could decide who holds power in the years ahead. 17 metals buried deep beneath the earth are now at the center of a global race. They power the phone in your hand, the car on your street, the wind turbines on your horizon, and the weapons that defend nations. They are called rare earth elements. And they are quietly reshaping global power. From Washington to Beijing, from Canberra to New Delhi, governments are racing to secure them. Because whoever controls rare earths controls the future of technology. Rare earths are a group of 17 metallic elements used in almost every modern device. Let me give you some examples here. Neodymium powers the magnets that drive electric vehicles and wind turbines. Terbium makes LED lights shine brighter and lanthanum sharpens camera lenses. They are the hidden foundation of modern life. Metals that make today's technology possible. Take them away and everything slows down. The green transition, the digital revolution, even national defence. Yet despite the name, rare earths aren't truly rare. They are found across the planet, but almost never in concentrated form. Extracting them takes money, precision and patience. Refining them takes even more. And doing it cleanly is the hardest part. That's why they are valuable. And that's why they have become a strategic resource. According to the US Geological Survey, the world holds over 90 million tons of known rare earth reserves. China leads with about 44 million tons, nearly half of the global total. Brazil follows with 21 million tons, largely untapped. India has 6.9 million tons, mainly along its southern and eastern coasts. Australia holds about 5.7 million tons, home to one of the world's richest deposits. Russia has 3.8 million tons. And Vietnam holds 3.5 million tons. The United States has about 1.9 million tons. Smaller but strategic reserves lie in Greenland, Tanzania, South Africa, Canada and Nigeria. Together they contain the minerals needed for everything from smartphones to satellites. But holding reserves doesn't mean controlling supply. The real advantage lies in refining the process that turns raw ore into usable materials. That's where China dominates. In the 1980s and 90s, Beijing invested in refining technologies that others ignored. It accepted low profits and high environmental costs to capture the entire value chain. Today, China reportedly mines around 70% of global rare earth output and processes about 90% of it. That gives Beijing extraordinary leverage. Every electric car motor, every wind turbine, every fighter jet likely contains components that trace back to China. And Beijing has used that influence before. In 2010, it halted exports to Japan during a diplomatic dispute, sending global prices soaring. Now it's tightening its grip again. In October, China expanded its export controls. It added five new rare earth elements to its restricted list. It imposed extra scrutiny on exports for semiconductors and magnets. And it introduced a rule that extends far beyond its borders. 
any company anywhere in the world that uses Chinese origin rare earths or Chinese refining technology must now apply for a Chinese export license before selling those products abroad. The new rules take effect on December 1st. It will apply to industries from clean energy to advanced defence. Beijing calls the policy a step towards sustainable resource management. Washington and Brussels call it economic pressure. Whatever the motive, the result is clear. Global supply chains are already on edge. Every shift in Beijing's policy now echoes across industries worldwide. Rare earth elements are now driving a new kind of diplomacy. The United States is leading the charge, building new supply chains with trusted allies. It has signed mineral agreements with Japan, Australia, Malaysia and Thailand. It's funding new mines and refineries and even taking equity stakes in key companies. Washington has also begun stockpiling critical minerals for national defense. Across the Pacific, Japan is taking a different path. It's diversifying suppliers and investing in recycling, recovering magnets from old electronics. It's also developing substitutes to cut dependence on imported materials. Europe is moving on a parallel track. Under the Critical Raw Materials Act, the EU aims to process 40% of its needs within Europe by 2030. New refineries are already coming up in Estonia, France and Germany. In Asia, India is scaling up fast. It has launched the National Critical Minerals Mission to expand mining, exploration and refining. The plan includes international partnerships with countries such as Argentina and Australia and a strong push for recycling and green extraction. New Delhi's message is clear. Growth must not come at the cost of sustainability. And the race isn't limited to Asia. Across Africa, exploration is heating up. Nigeria, Tanzania and Madagascar are attracting heavy investor interest. South Africa has expanded its geological surveys. So from Asia to Africa, the hunt for alternatives is accelerating because the stakes are too high to ignore. Rare earths have quietly become the new instruments of power. They've become essential to everything from clean energy to national security. Their growing demand is redrawing the map of global power. Nations are no longer competing over oil fields. They are competing over mineral supply chains. In the 20th century, power came from pipelines. But in this century, it flows through refineries, chip foundries and magnet factories. This new race isn't about who mines the fastest. It's about who can refine, recycle and innovate first who can build cleaner, more secure systems that don't depend on one country. For governments, this is no longer just economics. It's national strategy. Control of rare earths now means control of technology, defence and energy security. The next balance of power won't be written in battles. It will be written in tons of neodymium, praseodymium and diasprosium. Rare earths are the raw materials of the future. And whoever builds the most resilient supply chain will define it. Want the facts? The latest developments. News that gets straight to the point. Well, we've got all three just for you. This is First Post Live, a brand new show. Your window into what really matters. Don't miss it.